Hello everyone, welcome. So I've been going through the Must Hunter Wiki somewhat recently just to see what they've been adding to this series since I left third generation and right before I popped in at the waiter half the fifth. And after going through some of the weirder subjects in that wiki, I actually found quite a few interesting ideas and concepts that I feel like can be in a modern game if they were refined down a bit and had a few touch-ups here and there. And I just want to kind of share them with all of you, so it's not going to be like a video where it's like, oh, this monster should be in wilds, this monster shouldn't be. It's more just, here's ideas I found, they look neat. So, yeah, that's more of this video subject. But, uh, yeah, so just kind of just talk about a few ideas I found interesting and just discuss them for a little bit. So, yeah, hope everyone enjoys the video, and let's just kind of just get right into it. Starting off with actually two different ways to do a crab monster, we have... Tycoon Zamuza, I believe that's how you pronounce it, but I'm not a big fan of him personally, but I feel like his design has like, it's like a starting point for two different ideas. If you want to go for like a more general armor build, like we could have a crab monster that covers itself in like rocks and full well, yeah, what Zamuza does, but you know, to a more modest extent that isn't like a end game kind of fight. And know based on which environment he's in it actually affects his attacks you know if it's in a glacial area ice damage and maybe in a jungle area it's more poison possibly but the idea of like having a crab that defends itself not with a shell but with actual basically body armor that makes for itself using like rocks and like foliage and mud could be really interesting but of course it could get a little bit too close to our hermitor fight so that's a little bit iffy but Again, if you're, it's a good concept that could really work very really well, but it's something I'm way more interested in is the fact that, you know, Damuza's claws are actually covered with rock and stuff and he uses that to attack you. So why not make a full-on pom-pom crab kind of fight idea? And to those not in the know, pom-pom crabs are actually really adorable little crabs that use like anemones or like other objects to basically defend themselves with, which we have an enemy in each qua and they'll try and defend themselves from fish and stuff and it's really interesting so if we translate that over to a monster hunter game it could be really interesting because like it'll basically solve like a subspecies issue where instead of having different subspecies for di different biomes it could just simply be the crab just picks up different stuff in different areas so like you know have a giant crab that isn't like a Probably won't be shelved to make it a little bit different from the other crab monsters in the game. Different biomes, it picks up different stuff, which actually affects its attacks. Which, you know, we can have like a general, like, move set of like claw swipes, etc. Regular physical attacks, but depending on which biome it's in, it can have different objects that actually, you know, augment those attacks with different ailments and effects. For example, like in the glacial area, it could pick up like a massive amount of moss that actually explodes upon impact so it has blast damage and possibly if you know if it's in a glacial area that has a you know seashore kind of area maybe it grabs a bunch of like like kelp that's on the beach that is like has some toxin that makes you know it's basically we should go to sweep so you know it's gonna be sweep attacks so you have a crab in a glacial area that has blast and sweep which is interesting possibly if they want to go that route but they can also put that crab in a tropical area and have it pick up like fruits or like ivy that like poison or another and then like maybe some other plant that looks paralysis like a poison paralysis on the same monster that in a different biome is you know sweep and blast possibly as like a theoretical kind of thing and like kind of idea to make it at least a little bit unique since instead of making separate subspecies it's just the same animal but just has tool use a little bit and the idea of like possibly disarming it like you would like a shogun or a hermitor where it's like you break its shell and it actually affects it a little bit maybe if you break the claws of the giant pom-pom crab it'll actually disarm it for a bit where it'll drop the object it's holding it'll lose the augment you know ailment effect it gets from that item and it resorts to basic physical attacks for that claw until eventually it runs off, it gets a new one, and the cycle goes on and on until you beat it. So, I feel like the idea of like a pom pom crab could be very cool. Because again, it helps deal with the subspecies issue since instead of making an entirely new monster for a certain biome, 
or at least augmenting the model and behavior quite a lot for a certain biome. It's the same monster, it just picks up different stuff. And it's still unique, but it's also the same. So it maybe helps with development time as well, so that's also a pro. At least it should be, unless they have a different system I'm not aware of, but it's, it's definitely a concept that could work. And it could be very fun too to have a bunch of different weapons based on its different combinations of ailments. So like two sets of dual blades or bows or whatever, but like blast and sweep or poison and paralysis for example and just have fun with that you know i'll definitely be a big fan of poison and paralysis dual blades so definitely very interested in that and overall i think like the crab family does need a little bit more love because like there isn't that many members of the whole family overall and you know termitor there's the shogun and then there's shen and there's like shen's in the corner but siege battles haven't been the thing for a while so he's not really around currently so Having more like mid-range to high tier crabs that are like in a mainline game could be very cool. And I think that would be really nice to have overall, just get more variety and you know having a little smaller subspecies of crabs in different areas could be really fun too. So or not subspecies, more like different species of crabs in general. Like there's hermitors, there's the Cianotors, and then there's whatever you want to call it, pom pom crab stuff. So it could definitely be really unique and I'm really hopefully that crabs get anything at all, you know. You know, we got a new spider coming in wilds, I'm very excited for that. I'm really hoping they maybe get a crab as well, but we'll have to see, but I'm still very excited and I'm really hoping that we do get a crab and maybe it will be a pom-pom crab because I think that idea could be really cool, though it does conflict a little bit with like Kongawawa because he also changes his ailment based on where he is and all that stuff and what he eats, so maybe a little bit of conflict where they're too similar, but hopefully not and I guess it depends on how they're implemented, but yeah, it kind of conflicts a little bit there, but hopefully we do get any crab at all, but if it is pom-pom crab or actually something really unique, I'm all for it, really. Especially in like a modern game where there's a lot of ecology and all that stuff, and you see the crab just go through shoreline or the jungle just picking up stuff could be really cool to see. On to the next idea, I think like an owl-like monster like Malfesto could be really cool to have in a modern game. Because like I've seen this fight and it's actually pretty interesting especially the way he turns his head around very quickly when you tries to do a um side attack and he just immediately responds by just turning around immediately so and his whole fight looks interesting and i just really think like having a owl monster at all just get a nice touch up in a modern game it can be really cool especially since you're going to going for a more open style game like wilds or world or stuff that's similar to that Having like a, you know, Malfesto or another owl-like monster just sitting on top of a branch and if you enter the area and he sees you, he just immediately tries to jump you, basically. And kind of be like an ultimate nighttime predator, basically, in terms of like a small-ish bird, relatively. You know, it's still like twice the size of you, but small-ish in comparison. And I think about having like a something similar to that could be very cool. I'm not sure how you can really implement the whole confusion thing if, you know, Alfesta has that, like, weird confusion mechanic where you basically reverses your, reverses your controls. And I don't really know how you can really do that in a modern game without being completely infuriating, but maybe you can do something like that, or maybe you can make it so that if you're affected by confusion, you see clones of him somewhere else and he's not there, and basically have, like, hallucinogenic effects, basically, and, like, you control your character just fine, but you just see stuff that isn't there. Given how fast you may move around, it could be really painful. So, it could be interesting, but I think the confusion mechanic is going to have to be a weird... It's going to need some touching up quite a bit. Actually make it bearable or interesting. Of course, they could always just reverse your controls again, but that's still a little bit weird, so... That's kind of just up in the air a little bit, but like, design itself, like an owl monster, probably is pretty solid. Like, I know Seregios has kind of like owl-like feet a little bit, relatively, like, but having, like, a proper owl monster that actually is, like, a lower tier monster that isn't completely, like, you know, Regios tier is, uh, not bad. I have, overall, just more variety. Plus, besides, like, Kuwu and, like, Rapeko, like, there isn't really much in terms of like small bird wyverns in terms of like actual things that actually look like birds instead of just great jagging all that stuff so I feel like having a smaller monster that actually is 
One more fresh out. It would be definitely quite nice, especially. And just having him as, like having him as like ambience above like a branch or something in the area could be really cool. Like having him snore on a or sleep on a branch and you just hear him as you go through an area. I think that's really cool ambience too, so I feel like there's definitely a lot of potential for him. And I feel like definitely if they were willing to touch him up, it could be nice. I'm not sure about his deviant though, but because maybe maybe not, but I think like the idea of him just getting touched up a bit just to fight some stuff up can be quite nice so yeah overall I think he's honestly I think I kind of prefer him over Kurapeko because like like yeah Kurapeko can summon Devil Joe but I think Malfesto just has a lot better design overall because there's a big owl but it looks stylized enough that I'm actually really happy to hopefully fight him in a modern game someday and overall I think he's one more one more favorite monsters in terms of design overall I just really like him quite a bit yeah, hopefully, if they ever do reimagine or update a owl-like monster or create a new one, it you know hopefully involves Malfesto in some level. Moving over to more of a Fang Beast kind of feel, we have a relatively underused kind of concept of a Beaver monster, and currently there is actually a monster from online that's very similar that can work pretty well. Which is Kazerber, we just how you pronounce it. And yeah, it's a giant beaver. And um, he seems to thankfully be a little bit better than simply just Azuros, but reskinned like Wugambi or Volvodon, but he has a few unique attacks. He's pretty low tier overall in terms of like his attacks. At all. Like he's very simple. I feel like he has quite a lot of potential. Because first off, you can have a lot of ecology related to him, like him cutting down trees, him moving trees somewhere else, you know, a dam, possibly. And I feel like his look as well is also decently unique. Because again, we don't have a beaver monster, and his... He's not like an Azuros clone, really. So hopefully, if he ever gets reintroduced, hopefully he won't turn into that, but... Overall, I think he can be very interesting ecology-wise, and, you know, for the current games, which seem to focus more on that, that's pretty solid. And I think, like, him having, a, like, a touch-up in, like, HD could be really good, too. You know, it'll make him very really nice, because, like, currently he looks a little bit kind of meth-heady a little bit. He looks a little bit off, but I feel like, like, Kongawala, with some proper fur that actually looks like fur, and a little touch-up here and there, he can look a lot better. And fight-wise, I think he has a lot of interesting ideas he could work with. You know, he can... There's actually a few variants of him, and one of them is actually a desert variant that can, like, move mud, apparently. And that can be really cool. You know, could transfer that over to the main species as a whole. And so you can, you know, basically melee attacks, throwing mud everywhere could be interesting. And then, like, you could have him pick up a tree or, like, grab a dead tree and just swing it around. And I feel like this could be a good way to, like, be unique. Because, like, if you're in, like, an icy area, the tree is covered in ice, ice damage. You know, trees in a volcanic area. Half on fire and ashy and like embers coming out of it fire damage and maybe in a rainforest area it's like soaking wet and maybe a little bit of water damage you know and then maybe a regular forest it could be just raw physical damage you know like there's a ways you can make it unique and add a nice little touch to each biome to make the whole fight unique so there's a lot of ways you can mess around with him and i'm definitely thinking he's actually very similar to Kongawala, where if you properly touch him up, and he can actually be a half decent, decently big, you know, thoroughly unique, like, road tier monster. So, to be fair, he's more like equivalent to, like, Great Chakras in terms of difficulty, probably, but having, like, a nice, you know, early game monster that's unique is always quite nice. And I feel like, again, it's like he's unique enough where I think if you alter him enough, it could be nice. So I don't know how the relationship between online and the main series is, because, like, I think it's weird. But I feel like if you possibly could introduce him to a later game, that could be interesting. And I think just, like, ecology-wise alone, he could be very cool. And fight-wise, again, it's early game monster, you're not going to expect much, but... I feel like for early game monster, he could be at least unique and fun. And especially with him swinging around a tree in his mouth and just trying to beat you to death with it, it could be really funny, so... Yeah, I think he actually has some unique stuff, and also you could always make a subspecies where it's like, oh, it's in the desert, more mud, or 
Who oh, knows? You know, it's like I feel like it. It's flexible enough where it could have worked in a lot of areas, snowy areas, you know, tundra area, and regular forest, and like maybe rainforest is probably the best. But overall, I think he's again flexible, and I think if you just again you get a little bit of a touch up in modern game, he can really shine. But we have to see if they ever do reintroduce him because again I think it's a online to like base main line series relationship is weird so i don't know apparently all wine was like cut short a long time ago so maybe they can reintroduce them and it won't be that bad but we'll see again it's weird i don't know what to say about that so i think overall just a beaver monster in general could be very cool and it has a lot of potential and moving on to a actually pretty unique creature as it is actually a mammalian leviathan we have Cardon. Now this is very much similar to like what you expect from a walrus or a seal and again it's a mammalian leviathan so you know I think it has a lot of potential in terms of that alone because you know it's like leviathans are cool but having an actual mammalian one instead of just another fish or alligator or wizard could be very cool or another fish you know again like there's a lot of fish plus you off stuff at your desert there's so many of them so having again one that's actually covered in fur instead of scales could be you know unique by itself already and it can actually be somewhat good overall because also it's not only it's like a basically a package deal because you have the main large male then you have the smaller females and semi-adult males or i believe they're called pakara and then you have your babies which are adorable and you can tell already that they're a Royal Woodrock clone, essentially. But they don't have to be a Woodrock clone. Because, like, they do water damage, or at least the Picardon does. But I feel like if you ever want to go for, like, a glacial area, and you want kind of, like, a mid-range ice monster, having, like, changing them to ice, and, like, like change a bunch of attacks to be more unique overall, could be really cool. Especially since they're basically a package deal where you have... A large monster, a medium-sized monster, and a baby monster. And that by itself, ecology-wise, could have a lot of possibilities. And I believe, like, just overall just having a monster that's so, like, unique in terms of that. Like, Ludroff, where it has multiple stages of its lifespan available for the players to see is very nice. As, like, a just idea by itself. And also, I just think having, like, a monster that really vibes with the idea of a... I guess vibes, but um, kind of goes along with the idea that here's like a giant glacial sea area or like a shoreline, and it goes along that and just kind of like roots out like sh you know shellfish and all that stuff, and it'd be actually really cool for like ecology watching it around, like go around and try and get for food and maybe interact with the smaller pakaras and maybe even the babies potentially, and again if you just change it over to ice and like revamp some of its attacks to make him a little bit more unique than Woodroff or Royal Woodroff. Like you can easily make it like its own independent thing. Like of course you can share some attacks, you know, tail swipes and uh, rolls make sense and all that, but like having it chuck ice balls at you, having it basically just heck it, it actually could be like a mix between water and ice and but you know weapons are gonna be ice and all that stuff when you craft weapons, but it could actually be a mix of ice and water, even to make it more unique. So it could be a tier above Woodroff, maybe, if you want to put it that way. And while it came from, you know, Frontier, so it's, again, the relationship is a little bit eh. Like having like a seal monster, even if it's a different one, could be really cool. Or even like a walrus one, could be really cool. Because again, just having a mammalian leviathan that's actually so like has all the stages of its life and can be very interesting with ecology and all that stuff could be very nice to have and i feel like it maybe that could also help woodroff a bit because then it can expand woodroff by proxy in the future but i feel like if you have one you can't have the other really which is a shame but i do like i actually kind of do like both of them really like i i fought woodroff quite a bit of times and i did like him quite a bit but i'm just looking at this guy right now and uh, honestly the pardon and the Lesser Pakara and the Babies, they're, I kind of like them quite a bit, like design-wise, overall. And I feel like, again, if you just give them a nice revamp, they can look really cool. Especially with having them, like, pop out of, like, Glacial Sea and rush you down and possibly other stuff like that. And especially since, you know, like, elephant seals are kind of a thing. And, like, having, like, two, like, adult 
male, like, car Dawn just swam into each other for, like, territory could be really cool, like, thematically. Because you would have, like, two, like, bus sized seals just, like, bash each other over and over again for territory. Which, you know, elephant seals do, so... It could be really interesting, and overall, I think they're probably one of the better things to have in the game. If they're ever going to add a mammalian Leviathan, so... If, we've ever, if they ever do, they either do Picardon himself or something similar, because I feel I think the concept alone is very interesting. And that's all the interesting concepts I found so far. Now, I kind of looking through all the stuff. I actually kind of feel a bit bad because like uh, like in Frontier and online, there actually are quite a few interesting ideas. That like amongst a few of the weirder ones, there's actually some pretty decent stuff in there. It's just I, it's kind of a shame that none of these monsters have yet been in a modern game where they could properly shine. Because again, in Frontier or, you know, online, there wasn't that much focus on ecology. It was more just jump at monster and bash it over the head with a stick. So, hopefully in a modern game where there's more ecology, there's more detail, and all that other stuff, I feel like a lot of these concepts or even monsters can shine quite a bit. And I'm really hoping for a day we possibly get some of these guys in a modern game because that, you know, will help bring some new stuff in, it'll be very exciting. But it's not really like a wild, like, this should be in here, this shouldn't be in there, you know. It's more just a general, like, I think these concepts are cool, so, yeah. But I hope everyone enjoyed the video, and I appreciate everyone stopping by. You know, like, comment, subscribe if you like the video, dislike if you don't. Discord, Twitch, or down below if you want to go there for whatever reason, and... Again, I appreciate everyone stopping by, and, uh, keep trying to get videos out when I can. Just busy recently, unfortunately, so... That's a saying. But either way, appreciate everyone stopping by. See you guys next time, where that may be. Good night, everyone. Ciao.